Hey guys, I uh, hope everyone's doing well. So today's video, uh, I'm going to show you my favorite uh, favorite technique for kind of getting a gaining a monitor's trust socializing. So this is part of our kind of socializing monitors series. Um, so a little bit of background. This is our new uh, female parenti we got. Um, probably got it about two months ago. It was pretty good, like it wasn't um, fear aggressive when we got it, but every time I would pick it up it would kind of defecate on me and um, just tough, uh, like uh, puff up and, and hiss and whatnot. Um, so it was, it was pretty good. So basically what we've done, we've got it in an enclosure, it's um, actually in my bedroom. Uh, it, it's winter here, so it's just a, just an indoor kind of isolation enclosure. Um, for the two months, apart from the first couple of days when I got it out to see how it was, uh, I've only had to pull it out of the enclosure twice, and that was to take it to the vet just to to get it checked up because it had a few. It's um, it's poop is a different colour to what. Uh, I thought it should be and we checked it for parasites and everything it all came back ne negative so it was all fine um, but apart from that just been leaving it to its own devices if I need to change a light bulb change a light bulb if I need to pull out poop I go in there pull out poop um, while it's in there I do it and um, I basically do the same thing that I'm doing in this video where I put my hand up to it if it comes to come out and then I do what I need to do, whether it's change the water or pull out poop or do whatever I need to do in there. Um, so apart from that, I just basically left it for two months. And then now every time I open the door to to pull something out or or to do something in there, and it's usually once a day, um, sometimes twice a day, I'll just sit there by the door. Um, repetition, like I'll sit outside the door and I'll kind of wait and as you can see in the video, his like her, her natural curiosity, like she'll be sniffing around. The door's wide open. It's a big, big open door. I'm there in the whole area, and any part of the doorway where the lizard wants to come out, I just gently um, raise my hand up there and and kind of let it lick it. I don't want to scare it back in there, so I'm very slow and and. Um, kind of calm with my movements but at the same time I don't want it to jump out before I get my chance to get my hand there so um, it's kind of you just just kind of judge the pace um, so there initially in this process because um, I've been feeding this guy quite regularly because he's inside even though it is winter to so try and get a bit of size on him or on her I should say um, but so it's got a really strong food response. So everything that was coming into the enclosure looked like food. So it's, initially you've got to make sure you break that kind of... Um, you, you let her know that you're not food. So the trick with that as well is, is kind of kind of go slow initially so that she doesn't rush you f for a food response. And then you you move in quicker than she can think. Yeah, and what I mean by that is when when you saw earlier where she's coming up to kind of lick my hand, as she's licking the hand, she'll be thinking, is this is this food, is this not food? So you, you move slightly towards her, um, even to the point of a hand under the chin. And you, you, you want to move slowly, but you, you'll judge it yourself as to how fast you can move when you're doing that. Um, but basically, it's it's to break the concentration in the licks. To say, no, this isn't an a inanimate object or a food item that's moving away from me and acting like prey. This is something else. And then you get to the point where you can touch the chin and and give her a give her a chin scratch. And and um, yeah, there's, it's very important you kind of get that right and you make sure you don't have food sent on your hand because um, in personal experience, a bite from me. Parenti is incredibly painful. Uh, they've got incredible jaw pressure, and and kind of doing this kind of thing, it um, 
it, you're starting from scratch kind of thing, so they could potentially mistake you for a food item rather easily. Um, at, at this stage in the in the process, especially with um, kind of parentes, you're not, unless you back them into a corner, you're not likely to get a defensive bite, unless of course they've been um, kind of terrorized before you, you got to them. Um, Laces are a lot more defensive, uh, as you've seen in the other videos, and they can, like, they'll they'll kind of rush you if they're scared, and you've got to get past that as well, but we do that in the other videos, and I'll show you how to kind of actively get past it. Um, this is my favourite technique out of all the ones that we do, just because it's quite simple and relaxing, and basically I'll just sit there for, for ages, and, like, in these short little clips here where it's coming up and wandering around there's like three to five minutes in between each little one where it goes back to the basking spot sits there for three to five minutes then gets up and comes and walks around and in that time I'm just looking on my phone at, at news articles or Facebook or Instagram or whatever and just keeping myself busy or just sitting there just um, you know just patiently sitting there and then it gets it gets curious again, comes up and, and wants and wants to wander out and, and you see there it popped its claw on my hand and that's that's a good step as well. Eventually it will want to actually just climb out. And um and then of course when it does just climb out it'll it'll come up and you'll kind of move your hands about and if you put your hand on it it'll it'll get a little bit um a bit scared again and then dart back in or but it, it's it's little step and little step, and as I said, I have taken this guy out a couple of times to take him to the vet, and that hasn't impacted on this. So, um, so don't think that if something happens um, where you have to interact with the animal, it's going to impact. Um, again, we did leave it for two months, apart from those two pullouts where I was just walking past the enclosure and not really touching the lizard, but. Um, it is just basically getting used to it, used to you, and in a high traffic area, that's that's a good area. So, um, it's it's a really good technique. This one we use this technique with the with our adult parenti, um, our adult parenti big slice, and the other things when he was when he was younger, and used it with our laces to a certain extent as well. And and when you Laces, there's a couple of extra steps in there, and and sometimes if um, like if you've got a, a parenti or something that's that's a bit aggressive, or or you get a monitor that's that's older, um, you use the other techniques. But if you can, um, and you've got the like the monitor with the personality that's good, use this technique. It's um, yeah, it's 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 very relaxing, and it's it's the best one I reckon for. Kind of building trust with your monitor and and making them want to actually climb on you because their natural curiosity wants them help makes them want to kind of explore. Um, so you open the door, you sit in front of the door, and the only way they can come out is to climb up onto you. And um, to do that, they've got to smell you, they've got to get used to your touch, and and eventually they'll they'll climb up. Like you don't want to chase them in the enclosure. You don't want to kind of stick your hand in there and, and chase them around and force the interaction. Um, and you can see here I'm not putting my hand up because it's it's a little bit it's a little bit nervous. I don't want it to back away. I want it to and now I'm putting my hand a bit closer and I just I kind of want to encourage it and coax it out as as kind of stress free as possible for the lizard. So um that's like minimal movement from me until it gets close to coming out and then then a bit more interaction like like you see here just a just a little tickle under the chin and and again as I've said in other videos the um, like the little pad under the chin relaxes monitors down really well and it's a great concentration break um, so that's something you want to kind of imprint on them as as early and as much in the training as you can um, but yeah I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, I think our next video will have to be on uh, how we incubate 
monitor eggs because we've been asked to do one of those so we'll show you our incubator and what we use for that and um, and then yeah we'll might go through our other animals again and yeah we'll see what comes I've got to post more videos up in lockdown at the moment so it's a bit hard to get motivated but um, yeah we'll see what we can do hope everyone's well and um, stay safe